Hey YouTube, what is good? It's been a while, I know, but we're back and this time I'll be taking you with me through a fantasy image we created with Kiara in the studio. So let's roll that new intro and let's just get started. So first off, thanks for watching this video. I'm gonna open up Capture One, it's already open, and I'm gonna go through the images, how we built up this entire set. So if I start with the first image, it's totally black. I just move a little bit further and you can see the dirt getting into the frame. So this is created inside because the temperature outside was not so nice. So we decided to change things up and make sure that we have done it inside so that it's comfortable for the model now if we go further you can see this is the entire set we build up not build up build out so you can see the apples the ferns the dry ferns like a big bag um yeah just to make sure that we were able to put everything in there and then lighting wise, this was pretty easy. So we have an indirect Allen Chrome modifier, which has two holes in them. The day I bought them, I burned them with the heating from the ceiling, the little light spots. Um, so we have them going up on a boom tripod, which makes it possible to create like a 90 degree angle. This way you don't have a tripod in front of your lens and it just makes it easy to control the light because at the end of this uh, angled tripod you have a wheel which allows you to pivot the strobe up and down. Now the light we have used is an indirect light because we really wanted to create that soft light meaning the light which is an Allen chrome bounces back into the strobe when it fires and then it just comes back out of it. That way you already have nice diffused light. And then if we move further, you see me testing with the light setup. This is the first shot we've taken. So this is just the model in the blue dress on the ground. The ground was still a bit cold. And since she was a little bit afraid of like uh, the little insects running around, we had to make her really comfortable. So when I go through these images, you can see this is the composition I, de I, I decided to go for. I'm on a ladder pretty up high. And then it's just a matter of like decorating the scene with the things you as a photographer would like to see. So you make sure that the dress is okay, that you put the apples next to the model, the leaves, so that you make your image in camera instead of later in post-production. Now for these kind of images, there's always post-production, but the less you have to do in post-production, the better. So if I just go through them, you can see the ladder where I'm standing on here below. And yeah, it's just a matter of finding the right angle, especially because you're shooting from up high. It's difficult to create that nice angle and the dress is pretty long. So as you can see, this is shot with, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, this is shot at ISO 100, 1 25th of a shutter speed. And let's see if we can find it in the information. It's shot with the 1635 from Nikon, combined with the Nikon D850, which is a 46 megapixel. So if I would need to crop, I can still crop and I have the pixels to do so. Um, it's shot in the morning, as you can see. Um, any new things to tell you? No. ISO as low as possible, even though I could have gone to four, uh, six, 46, no, 64. Um, so yeah, and then it's just a matter of taking some images, telling the model like, hey, perhaps you can do this, perhaps you can do this, because if you compare, let's see if I can find it. Not yet, like the... If you compare the dress from the left to the right, you can see that for me as a photographer, this line from the hand taking you in the image, going down through the body and taking you back out of the image or back in the image, with this part of the dress is nicer than this kind of images because this way she blocks her body and this dress is totally not appropriate the way it is styled. So it's just a matter of finding the right balance in between. So when we go further in the series, you can see it's like taking a lot of images 
and you can see it's a mess like we even put plastic on the ground but yeah you can tell there's ground spilled all over the place so later it's cleaning up time it took me about two hours if i'm not mistaken to get everything fixed sorted out so and then it's just a matter of shooting images now keep in mind i'm shooting tethered that means when i take an image the image immediately gets onto the big screen so that the model can review and go like yeah okay i'm happy with it or no not really now here we decided to have the model turn her palm up as you can see um but we wanted to put something in it because if the hand would have been empty it would have been a totally different image so we decided to put an apple in the hand since that's part of the image now my initial goal when starting with this image was to create everything red so we have a red dress we have red apples everything will be in the same color one of the good things is blue and green are those colors that are easily fixed or changed in post-production since that's the colors they use for green skinning green screening and stuff so and then when i scroll through them like i ch I, ch I tried different angles some worked some didn't work so and then you can see it's just a matter of like trying some different things this is like for instance this is not really a dress it are two pieces of fabric combined together um, and then finding a right angle now you can immediately tell it's totally different than the image we have seen before since this it, it doesn't make her look any comfortable it, it's just like straight down there's no definition of the body of the model and then yeah i just went through them created some other images tried some different things but then we tr decided to take this angle let me see like this angle is cool but then everything behind her gets a mess and i wasn't planning on uh, doing that in post-production so we decided to take one of the canvas backdrops and bend them so that that's in the background but in the end none of the images were selected to make it true to the final selection so and then we ended with these kind of images they are cool but they're not at the level of which the blue dress were so that's the point i decided like hey you know what let's call it quit we got the image we wanted and as you can see i only took like 169 images one yeah which is not a lot for a shoot like this but since she's laying on the floor it's a little bit scared of the bugs you get the idea so and then when we open up the final result so this is one of the final images this is another one this is the original one no excuse me this is already a retouched one this is the final retouched one this is another one with the dress and then i did some photoshop magic to make everything a little bit more fantasy kind minded the same for this one so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna open this file up in photoshop and show you how i have retouched these images so let's do that so when we open up this image in photoshop this is the final result i'm gonna right click and just go like open with photoshop then it opens up photoshop and it opens up the file so let's wait a sec almost there so when we have opened up this image this is the image we've seen so this is the finished one this is the original one so i'm gonna go layer by layer for you so you can see what i've done so as mentioned before this is the image that made the final cut so we have a hand taking you in the frame leading you through her taking you back out and then as an extra attention point we have an apple on the right side so first things i've done is opened up is converting the layer to a smart object which allows you to go back into edit into editing the same thing again without making it destructive so in this part i did a raw filter let's open that one up so when this is open you can see i don't think i did a lot of crazy stuff color mixer perhaps yeah so what i did is i pushed the blue the u from the blue a little bit more to the blue instead of to the because it was here now it's there so i made it a little bit more bluish and that's 
the only thing I did in this part. So that's that step. And then we did some dodging and burning. Now, dodging and burning is something that is really important, but it's really subtle. Like I just did this part of the image. And when we have a look at the burning, it's the same. So I mainly focused on the face because that's where the issues were going on. So if I disable this one and enable this one, you can immediately tell the difference just by doing dodging and burning. I didn't do any healing, just dodging and burning. Then I did a cleaning pass. So this is cleaning up some things with just the normal healing brush, the uh, spot healing brush, which does it automatically. And then when we move on, I did another round of dodging and burning, which is on a gray layer. So it's just like focusing again on the face, more contouring. So with contouring, you are defining a body and giving it more a three dimensional shape. The same with this one, this one, this one. Let's enable these back. There we go. So that's one of the steps. Now, this is more a stylized decision you make as a photographer. Do you want to go for that extra punch in the image? Do you want to make it a, a realistic image? Do you want to make it an unrealistic image, a fantasy image? It's all a matter of what you prefer. So that's just a matter of what you prefer as a photographer. I decided to go with a little bit of fantasy vibe because this image allows it. So I can go a little bit more in retouching this image. Now, I did another pass of dodging and burning. As you can see, you can make it really pop, really three dimensional. Here, I did some frequency separation. Frequency separation lets you split the image up into texture and color. And that way you have the possibility to control both. So we smoothened out the transitions in the color. Now keep in mind when I say smoothen out, it's not like we are removing texture. That's just the goal of this technique to keep the texture present in the image. And then you just blend colors. If you want a future update about how I use frequency separation, don't hesitate to let me know below. I'm sure there are previous videos where I've used it extensively. Again, then we went to the dodging and burning, but this time the focus was shifted more towards the scene instead of just the model. So you you, you see the, the technique is to just slightly build things up. Don't go in overboard, don't go overboard, just build it up. If you build it up with small steps, in the end, the difference will be huge. So it's the same here. I just switched this. Then I did a first color pass, which is like already the big one. So let's see if I go through it. I'm going to disable everything. So first things first, the red dress. How do we go from blue to red? That's pretty easy. You just create a new use saturation layer. You take this hand icon, you just go on your image, select the color you want to adjust, and then just shift the U to whatever color you want. Boost saturation, boost the lightness. Now, this looks really funky because it has colors all over the place. Now, we can adjust the feathering mask by just adjusting the sliders over here. So as you can see, I can easily adjust these sliders. There we go. So it's just a matter of fiddling around with these sliders. Now, these sliders are pretty easily explained. The light gray is the area you are adjusting. The part between this line and the little arrow is the part that it takes into consideration as some sort of um, feather. And the color below on the second, this one is the color we are shifting it to. So for instance, if I would have gone for like, hey, I want the green dress, that's also possible. You can see it opens up possibilities. Now this only works because we have blue in the image. And if it was for instance, red, orange, pink, it changes things because those tones are also in skin, skin color. So that's something to keep in mind. So dress. The red apples, the same principle for this. I think it took the greens. Let me see. Greens. No yellows. Yeah, it took the yellows. That's why also the saturation has disappeared from the skin tones. Then 
I've brightened everything up, put a little bit more contrast in it. Selective color enabled me to color the red a little bit more reddish, a little bit more deeper red. Then we did like a negative black or how do we call it? And then we did something crazy, which is called the color fill. Um, how to explain it best? It's just like a solid color. Oh, it's just like a solid color. You ch you choose the color you want. For instance, this blue, and then you change the blend mode to soft light, for instance. But you don't want it to be visible in the entire image. You want to be it visible in certain areas. So we are using Blendiv, and Blendiv is a little bit more complex. So you double click on the layer. It opens up this thingy, and underlying layer is the one we want so if you see when i slide it i can see it's now only affecting the highlights but because it's affecting the highlights one of the problems is you can see it's not like a really nice transition so you hold down the alt key and then you can split it so that it feathers out evenly so if we can see the before and the after like before after so now we have told this colors to only be visible in the highlighted areas a little bit complex i know um but i just wanted to show you what i did now i didn't do it with blue i did it with some greenish and then it's just a matter of deciding what colors you want to go for like i can do it with a gold color which gives her skin tone a little bit more goldish vibe to it but like i said i decided to go with green and with red now the green only has an opacity of 11 percent, so that's something to also keep in mind you can play around with the intensity of colors and layers so that's that part which is not a lot if you compare it like this is the original one and this is the retouched one or at least one of the final steps of the coloring and then i did another liquify to shift some things around, make the dress a little bit more bulkier, those kind of things. Clean up some distortion, which happened while I was um, doing the liquify. So I cleaned that part up. There we go. Just by using the normal clone stamp. And then I darkened up the legs because we wanted to have the attention going to the upper body. Black and white. Lookup table, photo filter, color balance, gradient map, use saturation, and a selective color, which gives us this final result. Now, these stages, black and white, it lets you tint the image and it lets you only affect certain tones you decide so it doesn't turn your image black and white. Because if I would have turned it 100, this tint I selected here will be visible on the entire image. Now, if we reduce the opacity of it, it makes it less visible. And by changing the blend mode to multiply, it makes everything darker. So multiply is a later blend mode that makes some things darker. Color lookup table is just like, yeah, you just play around with it. Photo filter lets you select a cooling or a warming filter or a color and it just applies it to the image. Color balance is the same, it is divided into shadows, mid-tone, highlights. You choose whatever suits you the best. This For this image, I pushed a little bit more green into the image. Then the gradient map. Yeah, that's another funny one. So by adding a gradient map, you decide which colors you want in the shadow. So we have the red on this part, we have the white on that part. So shadows will be colored red. Highlights will be colored white. And by changing it to soft light instead of normal, you create a contrast in this image. And again, opacity 20%. Use saturation is just like playing around a little bit, making it a little bit darker and shifting the U a little bit more to the green. And then the final selective color makes the reds again pretty dark. By reducing this, I could have kept it like really saturated. But that's just a matter of which direction you want to go. And then as a final result, this is the final image. So 
we started here, we ended up there. So by just doing these steps, you build up the image slightly. So you start with just one adjustment, another one, another one. And an important key feature while doing this is just to have fun. Don't go focused on a final result, just have fun. Be inspired by other photographers. And when you are doing this, just keep on building it up and try things out. The most of the time just goes into playing around with colors. As you can see, most of the layer stack are colors. If you know that, like the skin retouching, the healing, the dodging and burning, those are all the same every time, every image. The colors is where you as a creative can define yourself compared to other ones. So put some time in getting to know the adjustment layers, which is where all the magic is happening in Photoshop. And yeah, just play around with it. If something is not to your liking, don't forget to change the blend mode. Don't forget to change the opacity slider. Play around with Blendiv. It's a little bit complex, but yeah, you manage to fiddle it around and then just slightly build things up. If it's too much, just take a step back. Just go back the next day and have a look at it. Don't rush it. Just take your time. That's with Photoshop. It's always take your time unless you're on the clock. Then it's like speed, speed, speed. But then the creative part is also less important between brackets because it's still important, but you have a certain vibe you as a photographer want to put in images so you know where to go to when toning those kind of images. So I think we've been in this video for quite some time. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions about it, let me know below and then I'll see you when I see you. Ciao, ciao.